Hey everybody, QuestWise here, and it's been a while since I've done a video, I apologize for that, it's a super busy time of the year for me, and uh, just it's kind of got pushed off the radar and doing a video, but I've uh, been saving up this one for a little while, I want to discuss a little bit of um, some Palladium fantasy for you today, and one of the more intriguing characters that I think uh, comes out of Palladium fantasy, and these types of videos, these ones where I kind of go through different character classes and stuff have been pretty popular. So I thought I want to switch it up a little bit. We've been doing some riffs, but I wanted to switch over to Palladium Fantasy and I wanted to talk about the Diabolus today. Uh, one of the character classes, OCCs, that I think is very, very interesting and uh, can also be a very challenge to play as well too. So what is the Diabolus? Let's jump right in here. The Diabolus is a magic user... Um, from the second edition of Palladium Fantasy, you can see here, um, that uses words. He specializes in words and languages and wards and magical circles and stuff. He's not a fireball flinging, crazy battle wizard. Uh, n by no means is that uh, the case of the Diabolus, and that's why it can be a little bit of a challenge to play. And Diabolus specializes in magical words, as you can see here, the 19 words of power. And he uh, specializes in the lost uh, runic alphabet. It's said that long time ago, the old ones were the masters of rune magic and ward magic and could simply speak these words and bring things into creation. And created the things like the rune weapons that are now these very legendary uh, weapons and, and armor of power that are scattered throughout the Palladium world, and the uh, but over time those that, that language of language of runes and wards and 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 secret symbols have have disappeared and have become basically extinct. But the Diabolus is the character who studies those, who digs deeper into learning those secret uh, wards, those secret words of magic, and the lost runic. Uh, meanings behind magic and spells and stuff. He's not a, a spell caster per se. He's not going to be flinging, like I said, fireballs or anything like that. You no know, kind of war magic. And thus, he's not going to be a frontline character. Where he comes into his own, though, is in understanding magic and the 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 way that magic is created and put together. He's going to be very very good for those types of of adventures and campaigns where you're seeking out lost civilizations or ancient ruins. Uh, that's This is where the Diabolus is going to shine. And when we'll get into the, how his magic works in just a few minutes. Um, you get a large array of, of abilities uh, for the uh, Diabolus um, at uh, mostly at first level. You're going to learn most of this at first level, which is kind of nice. And a lot of them are, again, like, you know, learning to read runes, Mystic symbols, understanding magic circles, using magic circles, which is interesting. Now, magic circles normally fall under the the guise of the summoner, uh, but the Diabolus knows how to work those things, and a lot of times it's easier for him if the circle's already created, and it's simply they're laying dormant. He knows how to activate those and to recognize what they are. But he also has a base chance, and it's pretty low to start off with. It's only about 20, 22% here. To actually recognize what a circle is and to use it as well too. He can identify wards, he can recognize enchantments, he can recognize magic, which is always really nice to have uh, when you're wandering about in the wilds or in a foreign land that your characters may have not have, have seen before. This is a usual, 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 excuse me, array of skills and whatnot and abilities over here. Um, and then we go into ward magic and how wards work. Now, wards are specific symbols that are sort of linked together in a line to, cord to, to create ward phrases. And what those do is once they're affixed to something, and they have to be affixed to something sort of either semi-permanent or, or physical. It can't be, um, can't be drawn onto skin or, or to cloth but it can be drawn or etched into wood or stone and then affixed to something. And those phrases string together, create a sort of magical effect. 
So the Diabolus is going to be a very sort of protective, defensive type character. If given enough time, the Diabolus can build a defense against um, enemies that is going to far outweigh anything else that any other character can do. Uh, especially at low levels and such as well too, which is really, really nice. So there's a whole section here on ward placement and what you can do and what you can't put onto wards and what they how they what they can be affixed to and affixing them to something. So like for instance if you're in an old ruins of a castle and you're you're being hunted by some kind of creature and you've all your characters have all pulled back into the central area, um, the Diabolus can create these wards and affix them and it talks about how different things work. Uh, using wax or rabbit skin glue, egg, tree saps to affix these, you know, wards that you've created to, say, a wall uh, or to a fence or something as well. Then, once the ward is actually created, once it's actually, like, sort of impressed into something, a piece of wood or stone again, you have to energize the ward. You have to actually use these magical phrases uh, and words that we showed you earlier before uh, to energize the ward itself. Now, once you energize the ward, it can you. There's a couple of different ways you can you can set it up so that it will go off the minute its its um, its ward phrase is sort of completed or made complete. Uh, that sounds kind of weird, but I'll get to that in a second. Or you can set it to have one last sort of like sequence one last thing to happen uh be a, a power word or a condition that's met that will then energize the word and set it off but the word itself is just a symbol a plain mundane symbol until it's actually energized by putting some ppe or potential psychic energy into the word itself the word duration uh this is kind of interesting that you can create them they're basically uh, as long as the ward can survive, it can survive. So, like, if it's on a piece of wood, until the piece of wood rots and falls apart, it kind of does that thing. There are wards that you can do to make uh, the wards permanent, and you'll see those later. They're more powerful types of things going on. Now, the way wards work as far as, like, uh, and it's called the ward phrase, most wards don't work alone by themselves, except for an alarm ward. Um, you can create just one symbol that's for your alarm and put it on something. And whenever it's triggered, and it, it will alarm or, or alert somebody. Now, that's the thing. The, it, the Part of the phrase is the alarm, but you also have to have some kind of condition that's met as well, too. So it could be anything from, uh, you know, uh, protection um, from, from the ward condition or effect. Uh, if an undead passes by, um, if evil passes by if it's you know there's a there's a and that's what a great about the Diabolus is that there are ones that are already put together word sequences and phrases for you but there's a whole variety of things that you can you can create yourself to make your own very specific effects and it gives a lot of variation and a lot of create um creative uh, um gives you a lot of creative license in order to create wards that are very unique to your character or to unique to the situation where your characters are in um, like, uh, for instance, here it talks about it cannot use just one condition ward or, uh, to like blind or agony. There has to be some kind of condition met. So in order to set off the wound, there has to be some kind of a trigger. There has to be some kind of a thing, whether evil enters the area or somebody, uh, trips the, you know, says the magic word or trips the secret line, that kind of thing. And those are all described right here and how that works as well too. Like, again, I said, it makes a lot of variation into the creating the ward phrases and stuff as well too, which is really, really cool. It gives you a lot of um, creative license when it comes to creating those things. Now, I would not say that the Diabolus is for everybody, uh, every type of player, because it does take a lot of book work and it does take a lot of sort of thought process behind this. So characters who, who are not into keeping a lot of notes and stuff and or like to just be on the front lines, Probably not going to like the Diabolus because um, it's it's not a very fast character to play. Um, by fast, I mean it's not just like, you know, uh, even certain wizards can just, you know, crank out a spell and and have the effects happen immediately. With the Diabolus, it's going to take a little bit more time, a little bit more thought process, uh, and a lot more note-keeping and bookkeeping and stuff as well. So for the characters, uh, the players who want the characters 
who are fast and you know flinging fireballs or chopping down bad guys. This is not that kind of character. But if you like a character who's into lost and secret things and conspiracies, this is the different character for you. Talks about components that you use for the wards and what you can use. Here are the rune symbols that you would use to create um, a specific uh, uh, words and creation uh, as far as like uh, in, in bold. Um, oh, geez, my brain is fried today, but uh, rune symbols that you would use to, to enchant types of different things and whatnot. Uh, it talks about creation time of creating a ward. Sometimes they're very quick. Sometimes they take a long time. Anywhere between, you know, hours to days to weeks, that kind of stuff. Um, talks about the ability to, to, to destroy a ward. If a ward is not active, if it's just created, if anybody can kind of push it away. But once a ward has been empowered, um, it becomes an almost permanent kind of a thing. Over here are, uh, it's called the ward arsenal. It's basically a list of all the different things um, uh, uh, that the... Diabolus can use um, in his sort of bag of tricks to create his wards. Now we get into the section on wards and symbols and stuff. I This is my favorite part of the book. I really, really do love this book uh, when it comes to this because it's one thing to describe what a ward is. It's one thing to describe what the magical symbol is. But to actually have the guys at Palladium actually draw these out and to show them to you, it gives you a lot more uh, a visual representation of you know, what they're trying to describe to you and what it might look like, as well as this gives you a very, very cool visual representation at the table. So when you're playing and the war and the Diabolist decides he's going to create a word phrase or a sequence, you know, he can actually draw these out and put them on a piece of parchment paper or he just have a piece, piece of paper uh, that's torn out of a notebook. Um, and it would give a cool visual representation, kind of a cool uh, little... Um, uh, an extra piece at the table to kind of show what's going on as well. It goes into everything from alarms to the different color symbols to the condition symbols, the major wards down here, and the number symbols as well too. Next we go into the damage effects and the different types of wards, and it describes out how each of them works, how long they last, how long they take to create, the power words they're used to invoke them, as well as any kind of damage that they might do as well too. So this is where the this is where the Diabolus comes alive. And this is where he's taking all the damage and effects and condition wards and stuff and you're mixing and matching them together to create your very own very distinct uh, magical effect. Again, another couple big page spreads of mystic symbols and stuff that again I think really bring this character to life. Really, really cool stuff. Uh, everything from you know devil and demon man and woman i mean there's a lot of different symbols here and what's really cool about this character is i, I can imagine uh, um you know playing one in a campaign and slowly sort of uncovering the mysteries of the old ones that have been lost for you know eons and stuff and and to using these like these symbols as sort of like a secret language to relearning some of that crazy, crazy abilities of the old ones. And as you level up, you become more proficient with each one of these things. And um, and it, and then thus creates a very, very powerful character. But again, a very not frontline heavy, fireball-wielding, magic-slinging kind of character. But a character that could... I think it starts off pretty powerful anyway, only because of the, he's not going to be one of those big things, but he does have the ability to create some very powerful wards and, and symbols and stuff um, right off the bat at first level, which is kind of cool because he's going to be that sort of defensive player. And while it's going to take him a while to create those defenses, once he does, um, you know damn sure that, that, that your other players, uh, other characters are going to be... Um, well taken care of. So more symbols, very, very cool. I love how that's all put together. Um, and then we go into different types of wards. Again, the inflicting wards, the power wards, and it actually goes through each of these symbols that we just went through and talks about how each of them works in the game. Now, I this is the Summoner OCC. This, so this is sort of the end of the section for the Diabolist, but I wanted to show you something else too, because the, because the Diabolist is sort of his wide, his range of knowledge is such wide and and diverse. I wanted to show you under the Summoner. The Summoner has a, the ability to work uh, magical circles, but so does the, the Diabolist. Even though it's less 
of a percentage for him to know some of these circles. He knows, he does know them right off the bat, which is kind of a nice thing, which again, expands his sort of, his, his base knowledge to a lot more stuff. Um, so he has a lower percentage chance of using and creating magical symbols than the summoner does, but he still has that ability. And in it, that's in addition to all the ward abilities and stuff as well, too. But again, what Kevin and the guys have done over at Palladium, and I think this is fantastic, again, it adds just another sort of visual element to the entire character playing, is that each one of these special symbols, whether they be protection symbols or they be summoning circles, all have a description and they all have the actual drawn out what the circles look like. Again, gives you a nice visual representation. I think it's also really fun too, and I've done this only a couple of times, but when I've had a few people play summoners, I've actually made them recreate the circle. So if they were trying to draw a protection from demon circle, I would actually make them draw the circle on a piece of paper. Pa piece of paper. Um, and if they had to erase anything, you know, go back, because it takes, you know, you have to do it perfectly the first time. So if they, you know, were, even though they're copying it from the book, if at any point they had to stop and erase, and they didn't say anything to them at first, but if they had to stop and erase anything, pff, the magic circle failed. And I didn't tell that to them until they actually <laughs> stopped to erase something. So kind of a fun little thing to do for the characters and stuff. But this goes more into, you know, summoning circles and how all these work and stuff. And a lot more of the of that kind of stuff as well, too. Again, this is more the domain of the summoner. But again, because the obelisk has such a sort of wide berth of knowledge, um, he, he can understand all those as well. Or she can understand them as all as well, too. So that's the obelisk. I just wanted to share that with you today. It's Palladium... Um, second edition palladium fantasy uh i think is a really cool character to play it's a very fun character to play but again not something uh for the weak of heart it's going to be more from an experienced character or, or a player excuse me experienced player and or somebody who really likes bookkeeping and uh, anyone who likes to play a character who seeks out lost magic and conspiracies and hidden truths uh think sort of like you know x files <laughs> Uh, in the fantasy world, uh, the Diabolist is that character for them. And uh, I guess that's it for today. Next uh, next time, we'll probably delve deeper into some other um, cool Palladium Fantasy OCCs or Occupational Character Classes. But until that time, I'm QuestWise, and we're out.